Hey friendlies, so the plan for today was to take a hike out at the Bois de Lies, which is like a, a nature park out sort of on the west end of the island. Um, but my girl is really sick. She's dealing with her first ear infection ever. So we ain't going anywhere. Today is also my birthday. So I've been celebrating by, uh, I spent the morning celebrating by, you know, cleaning up the house and stuff and doing laundry while the girls hit the clinic. But I'm still going to do a video for you guys today. Today, it's going to be about Amadou. I recently spoke about Amadou for the first time with you guys during a live stream. Um, I got this stuff a couple of years ago and I was afraid that it had, I don't know, dried out or something in the meantime, but I, I cut one apart and it's it's fine, it's perfect. So, I'm gonna um, chop up another one of these. I've looked up how to make it, um, how to make it right, and I'm gonna try that today. So the steps that I'm gonna take, there are like two different ways of doing it. I, well, there are, to process it, you can either cut all the, uh, the hard shell off and you know, go or you can just bash it um, I've been cutting it just I, I feel it's more controlled and then what I'm gonna do is boil it up in birch ash um, I know you guys who watch Emily's Outdoor Adventures know that that's what she does for her Amadou seems to work great I've watched a bunch of videos showing the difference between boiling it in birch and just using it raw and it definitely looks like it works better when it's been all ashed up so I'm going to start by, you know what, I'm going to half this so that I can show you what we're looking for here. Okay. <laughs> okay, see what I got here? That's what I'm looking for right there. It's like a, um, a suede-like texture. These are the spore tubes. You've got to cut that off, cut off the hard shell, and right there is what you want. It doesn't really depend on the size of the horsehoof fungus. I've seen some big ones when I've cut them open, there's like almost nothing there. And then some smaller ones have a lot. So I'm just gonna like process this out. I'm not gonna do all these right now. I'm just gonna do one, and then I'm gonna go make a little birch fire to boil it up in and then see about uh, getting the job done. Okay, so I'm down to the suede texture here, and that's what I'm looking for. So on the other side, what you can see here is all the spore tubes have to come out now. Apparently, spore tubes are great for carrying an ember, though they're not great for starting a fire. But I'm just trying to going to try to get them out so that I can get at this. I'm not I'm not skilled enough at this yet to be like taking out a large chunk and saving that for later. Here's a little spoon carver's trick. Well, I don't know if it's a spoon carver's trick because I haven't really seen it anywhere else before, but I'm a spoon carver and here's a trick. When I'm trying to get all the spore tubes out, this gets a little unwieldy. So what I've figured out is that a little Sloyd knife is a really good option because with one of these, you've got a lot more control. So I'm not so worried about cutting towards myself, like you know, like you do when carving spoons. Um, it's a much smaller blade, so I can really get into much tighter curves, much smaller areas. And when I get down to the end of it, grab a spoon knife. Like when I'm just trying to get that last little millimeter or so of the spores off without tearing out any of the actual amadou, it's really good. But I will tell you. Getting at Amadou will dull the hell out of your blades. So be prepared to 
do a whole lot of sharpening as you do this. Okay, because this isn't a cooking fire, per se, or at all, um, I'm not paying attention to, you know, putting all the sticks in through the, the port on the front of the hobo stove, the magical IKEA hobo stove. I'm just trying to burn up a bunch of, of birch. Incidentally, what I've just done here is the definition of a one stick fire, because the only thing I used was the birch. Hmm. Okay, and a little bit of inner bark from cedar that I had scrunched up. Close enough for me though. <laughs> so the next thing to do is just wait for all this birch to burn down into ash. And then I'll probably have to grind it up a little bit because there's always like some coals left over. And then uh, throw it in some water. Throw the amadou in with it. Let it soak, I think. I'm going to look that up again and then boil it for like an hour. I'm optimistic, this is gonna be great. Let's make some char cloth. Those of you who saw my, I think my second or third episode ever will remember um, the whole process of making char cloth. What I'm doing is waiting for that smoke to stop coming out of the hole. Then I'll take the tin out, let it cool completely, or at least to, uh, to the point where I can pick it up with my bare hands. And then I'll know that my char cloth is done. The nice thing about char cloth is you can't overdo it. And if you take it out and it's still brown or not charred up, you can always just put it back in. Ready? Now? Uh, wait, let me get my sheet. Because we always pack the knife away after we use it. Okay. Right here. Can I have a little scissors? Yeah. Really? Okay. I'm gonna take off the shoes. Okay, so let's take a look at the char cloth. You could sit backwards a little bit. Okay. It's been a few hours. It's cooled off nicely. Yeah, look, it's perfect. Yay! Thank you. Okay, take a piece. Put it there. Actually, you can put Oops, it. Oops, I broke it. It's okay. Munch it up. Put it right there. Put it on there. Check. Just on there to hold it down. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Yep. Here we go, give it a stir. Okay. All right. Now we boil it for an hour. We have to add water every now and again, okay? Can I add the water? Sure. So, um, can't get into the forest because of a sick kid? No problem. We've got a barbecue so we can cheat a campfire. And um, also thanks to the magic of Junior Advil, we're up and at him. Not, not enough to have gone for the hike and it took most of the day for her to be, well, first of all, back from the clinic and then to sort of, you know. We never went into real woods before. What? Water in there? Yeah, water's in here. Got the water out for nothing? No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? Gotta add more water to this. Yeah, bring bring the water. Okay, now stop. Ooh, hot. You know what? I'm gonna let this tea actually boil just for a couple of minutes. But you just put the paper in. Yeah, the tea bags. So look, birthday hike sunk by a sick kid lit, but I think I still made good use of the day, a little backyard bushcraft with the girl. And one benefit of having made the Amadou is that now the barbecue is ready for my birthday supper. So off comes the Amadou, on goes the goat. So the next thing to do now that the Amadou has been boiling for an hour is to take it out of the ash soup, it's still warm, uh, I guess drain it a bit and then give it a good bash. I guess the bash is A, it'll flatten it out a bit to make it easier to transport, but it's also going to help sort of mash the fibers up according to what I've read on the interwebs. So that's what I'm gonna do. Wow, man, the color is different after the, well, I guess it goes without saying that the color would be different after an, an ash bath. Now, I may be breaking up fibers here, but when I go to use the dried Amadou, First thing you do is you, you rough up the fibers again to make them fluff and easier to, to, uh, to combust. So this isn't the whole process here. So I got the Amadou all pounded up. Next thing to do is just let it dry and then test it out. This one still has a lot of those uh, spore tubes on it. So I don't know, I may have to trim those off before I can get this to work. Or maybe that one will be a failure. But anyways, I can't wait to try it out actually. Once it's dry and in my, in my kit. If this works, I'm gonna be really jazzed about it. I got plenty of, uh, plenty of horseshoe fungus downstairs to, to turn into more of this stuff if it works. I'm very jazzed. Now, <clears throat> one thing I am gonna do tonight is wash the heck out of all the tools I used because those are all tools that I use for spoon carving as well. And I'm not versed enough in this stuff to know the difference between horse hoof fungus and chaga. I know chaga is very safe, you can make a tea out of it. I don't know if horse hoof fungus is as safe or if it's highly toxic. And I am in love with not dying. So until I know for sure that horse hoof fungus is non-toxic, I'm gonna treat it like it would any mushroom or any other fungus. I'm going to wash the hell out of my tools and then I'm going to have to sharpen them all up because this beat the crap out of the edges on all my tools. But anyways, all that's for another video. For now, if you like what I'm doing, then please get the conversation started down below. Do you use Amadou? Are you interested in using Amadou? Do you think I duffed the process in any way? Do you think I did it all right? Um, what is your favorite Tinder if it's not, if it's not Amadou? 
Um, aside from that, please share the video. That helps me a lot. Um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If you are subscribed, then hit that little bell and leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys.